the Association of Southeast Asian Nations is a political and economic organization of ten countries located in Southeast Asia, which was formed on August 8, 1967 by Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore and Thailand. Since then, membership has expanded to include Brunei, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam. Its aims include accelerating economic growth, social progress, Soki cultural evolution among its members, protection of regional peace and stability, and opportunities for member countries to discuss differences peacefully. ASEAN covers a land area of 4.46 a million kmars squared, which is 3% of the total land area of Earth, and has a population of approximately 600 million people, which is 8.8% of the world's population. The sea area of ASEAN is about three times larger than its land counterpart. In 2012, its combined nominal GDP had grown to more than $2.3 US dollars a trillion. If ASEAN were a single entity, it would rank as the eighth largest economy in the world. History ASEAN was preceded by an organization called the Association of Southeast Asia, an alliance consisting of the Philippines. Malaysia and Thailand that was formed in 1961. The bloc itself, however, was established on August 8, 1967, when foreign ministers of five countries a Euro Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand a Euro met at the Thai Department of Foreign Affairs building in Bangkok and signed the ASEAN Declaration, more commonly known as the Bangkok Declaration. The five foreign ministers are Euro Adam Malik of Indonesia, Narciso Ramos of the Philippines, Abdul Razak of Malaysia, S. Rajarashnam of Singapore, and Thanet Komen of Thailand. A Euro are considered the organization's founding fathers. The motivations for the birth of ASEAN were so that its members, a Euro unregistered trademark governing elite, could concentrate on nation building, the common fear of communism, reduced faith in or mistrust of external powers in the 1960s and a desire for economic development. The bloc grew when Brunei Darussalam became the sixth member on January 8, 1984, barely a week after gaining independence on January 1. Continued expansion On July 28, 1995, Vietnam became the seventh member. Laos and Myanmar joined two years later on July 23, 1997. Cambodia was to have joined together with Laos and Burma, but was deferred due to the country's internal political struggle. The country later joined on April 30, 1999, following the stabilization of its government. During the 1990s, the bloc experienced an increase in both membership and drive for further integration. In 1990, Malaysia proposed the creation of an East Asia Economic Caucus comprising the then members of ASEAN as well as the People's Republic of China, Japan, and South Korea with the intention of counterbalancing the growing influence of the United States in the Asia-Pacific economic cooperation and in the Asian region as a whole. This proposal failed, however, because of heavy opposition from the United States and Japan. Despite this failure, member states continued to work for further integration and ASEAN Plus 3 was created in 1997. In 1992, the Common Effective Preferential Tariff Scheme was signed as a schedule for phasing tariffs and as a goal to increase the regional Euro unregistered trademark's competitive advantage as a production base geared for the world market. This law would act as the framework for the ASEAN free trade area. After the East Asian financial crisis of 1997, a revival of the Malaysian proposal was established in Chiang Mai, known as the Chiang Mai Initiative which calls for better integration between the economies of ASEAN as well as the ASEAN plus three countries. Aside from improving each member state's economies, the bloc also focused on peace and stability in the region. On December 15, 1995, the Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapon-Free Zone Treaty was signed with the intention of turning Southeast Asia into a nuclear weapon-free zone. The treaty took effect on March 28, 1997 after all but one of the member states have ratified it. It became fully effective on June 21, 2001, after the Philippines ratified it, effectively banning all nuclear weapons in the region. East Timor and Papua New Guinea, 
East Timor submitted a letter of application to be the 11th member of ASEAN at the summit in Jakarta in March 2011. Indonesia has shown a warm welcome to East Timor. Papua New Guinea was accorded observer status in 1976 and special observer status in 1981. Papua New Guinea is a Melanesian state. ASEAN embarked on a program of economic cooperation following the Bali summit of 1976. This floundered in the mid-1980s and was only revived around 1991 due to a Thai proposal for a regional free trade area. Environment At the turn of the 21st century, issues shifted to include a regional approach to the environment. The organization started to discuss environmental agreements. These included the signing of the ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution in 2002 as an attempt to control haze pollution in Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, this was unsuccessful due to the outbreaks of the 2005 Malaysian haze and the 2006 Southeast Asian haze. Other environmental treaties introduced by the organization include the Cebu Declaration on East Asian Energy Security, the ASEAN Wildlife Enforcement Network in 2005, and the Asia-Pacific Partnership on Clean Development and Climate, both of which are responses to the potential effects of climate change. Climate change is of current interest. Through the Bali Concord II in 2003, ASEAN has subscribed to the notion of democratic peace, which means all member countries believe democratic processes will promote regional peace and stability. Also, the non-democratic members all agreed that it was something all member states should aspire to. ASEAN plus three, leaders of each country felt the need to further integrate the region. Beginning in 1997, the bloc began creating organizations within its framework with the intention of achieving this goal. ASEAN plus three was the first of these and was created to improve existing ties with the People's Republic of China, Japan, and South Korea. This was followed by the even larger East Asia Summit, which now includes these countries as well as India, Australia, New Zealand, United States and Russia. This new grouping acted as a prerequisite for the planned East Asia community, which was supposedly patterned after the now defunct European community. The ASEAN Eminent Persons Group was created to study the possible successes and failures of this policy as well as the possibility of drafting an ASEAN Charter. In 2006, ASEAN was given observer status at the United Nations General Assembly. As a response, the organization awarded the status of dialogue partner to the United Nations. Free trade, in 2007, ASEAN celebrated its 40th anniversary since its inception, and 30 years of diplomatic relations with the United States. On August 26, 2007, ASEAN stated that it aims to complete all its free trade agreements with China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia and New Zealand by 2013, in line with the establishment of the ASEAN Economic Community by 2015. In November 2007 the ASEAN members signed the ASEAN Charter, a constitution governing relations among the ASEAN members and establishing ASEAN itself as an international legal entity. During the same year, the Cebu Declaration on East Asian Energy Security was signed in Cebu on January 15, 2007, by ASEAN and the other members of the EAS which promotes energy security by finding energy alternatives to conventional fuels. On February 27, 2009 a free trade agreement with the ASEAN regional bloc of 10 countries and Australia and its close partner New Zealand was signed. It is estimated that this FTA would boost aggregate GDP across the 12 countries by more than 48 US dollars a billion over the period 2000 to Euro 2020. ASEAN members together with the group are Euro unregistered trademark S6 major trading partners are Euro Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand and South Korea a Euro have began the first round of negotiations on 26 a Euro February 28, 2013 in Bali, Indonesia, on establishment of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The ASEAN Way since the post-independence phases of Southeast Asian states, efforts were made to implement regional foreign policies, 
but with a unifying focus to refrain from interference in domestic affairs of member states. There was a move to unify the region under what was called the A-Euro-ASEAN-WAYA Euro unregistered trademark based on the ideals of non-interference, informality, minimal institutionalization, consultation and consensus, non-use of force and non-confrontation. ASEAN members approved of the term a Euro ASEAN we are Euro unregistered trademark to describe a regional method of multilateralism. Thus the signing of the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia adopted fundamental principles, mutual respect for the independence, sovereignty, equality, territorial integrity, and national identity of all nations, the right of every state to lead its national existence free from external interference, subversion or coercion, non-interference in internal affairs, settlement of differences or disputes in a peaceful manner, renunciation of the threat or use of force, effective regional cooperation, the a euro asean we are euro unregistered trademark is said to contribute durability and longevity within the organization, by promoting regional identity and enhancing a spirit of mutual confidence and cooperation. ASEAN agreements are negotiated in a close, interpersonal process. The process of consultations and consensus is designed to engender a democratic approach to decision-making. These leaders are wary of any effort to legitimize efforts to undermine their nation or contain regional cooperation. Critical Reception The ASEAN way can be seen as divergent from the contextual contemporary political reality at the formative stages of the association. A critical distinction is made by Amitavacharya, that the a euro asean we are euro unregistered trademark indicates a euro OIA process of a euro regional interactions and cooperation based on discreteness, informality, consensus building and non-confrontational bargaining style as a euro unregistered trademark that contrasts with a euro the adversarial posturing, majority vote and other legalistic decision-making procedures in Western multilateral organizations a Euro unregistered trademark. However, critics argue that the ASEAN way serves as the major stumbling block to it becoming a true diplomacy mechanism. Due to the consensus-based approach every member has a veto, so contentious issues must remain unresolved until agreements can be reached. Moreover, it is claimed that member nations are directly and indirectly advocating that ASEAN be more flexible and allow discourse on internal affairs of member countries. Additionally, the preference for informal discussions to adversarial negotiations limits the leverage of diplomatic solutions within ASEAN, Michael Yeudna, explains, in his book International Politics of the Asia-Pacific Second and Revised Edition, The Limitations of the ASEAN Way. In summary of his argument, unlike the European Union, a Euro the ASEAN we are Euro unregistered trademark has made ASEAN members never aspired to an economic and political union. It was designed to sustain the independence and sovereignty of member states and to encourage regional and national stability. ASEAN differed in assessment of external threat and they operated within conditions in which legality and the rule of law were not generally consolidated within member states. ASEAN wasn't a Euro unregistered trademark TA will making body subjecting its members to the discipline of adhering its laws and regulations. It was operated through consensus and informality. Also, the member states avoided to confront certain issues if they were to result in conflicts. Meetings, ASEAN Summits The organization holds meetings, known as the ASEAN Summit, where heads of government of each member meet to discuss and resolve regional issues, as well as to conduct other meetings with other countries outside of the bloc with the intention of promoting external relations. The ASEAN leaders' formal summit was first held in Bali, Indonesia in 1976. Its third meeting was held in Manila in 1987 and during this meeting, it was decided that the leaders would meet every five years. Consequently, the fourth meeting was held in Singapore in 1992 where the leaders again agreed to meet more frequently, deciding to hold the summit every three years. In 2001, it was decided to meet annually to address urgent issues affecting the region. 
member nations were assigned to be the summit host in alphabetical order except in the case of Burma which dropped its 2006 hosting rights in 2004 due to pressure from the United States and the European Union. By December 2008, the ASEAN Charter came into force and with it, the ASEAN summit will be held twice in a year. The formal summit meets for three days. The usual itinerary is as follows. Leaders of member states would hold an internal organization meeting. Leaders of member states would hold a conference together with foreign ministers of the ASEAN Regional Forum. A meeting, known as ASEAN Plus 3, is set for leaders of three dialogue partners. A separate meeting, known as ASEAN CER, is set for another set of leaders of two dialogue partners. During the fifth summit in Bangkok, the leaders decided to meet informally between each formal summit, East Asia Summit. The East Asia Summit is a Pan-Asian forum held annually by the leaders of 16 countries in East Asia and the region, with ASEAN in a leadership position. The summit has discussed issues including trade, energy and security and the summit has a role in regional community building. The members of the summit are all 10 members of ASEAN plus China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia and New Zealand. These nations represent nearly half of the world's population. In October 2010, Russia and the United States were formally invited to participate as full members, with presidents of both countries to attend the 2011 summit. The first summit was held in Kuala Lumpur on December 14, 2005 and subsequent meetings have been held after the annual ASEAN Liadursa Euro Unregistered Trademark Meeting. Commemorative Summit A commemorative summit is a summit hosted by a non-ASEAN country to mark a milestone anniversary of the establishment of relations between ASEAN and the host country. The host country invites the heads of government of ASEAN member countries to discuss future cooperation and partnership. Regional Forum The ASEAN Regional Forum is a formal, official, multilateral dialogue in Asia-Pacific region. As of July 2007, it consists of 27 participants. ARF objectives are to foster dialogue and consultation and promote confidence building and preventive diplomacy in the region. The ARF met for the first time in 1994. The current participants in the ARF are as follows, all the ASEAN members, Australia, Bangladesh, Canada, the People's Republic of China, the European Union, India, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Mongolia, New Zealand, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Russia, East Timor, United States and Sri Lanka. The Republic of China has been excluded since the establishment of the ARF, and issues regarding the Taiwan Strait are neither discussed at the ARF meetings nor stated in the ARF chairman's statements. Other meetings, aside from the ones above, other regular meetings are also held. These include the annual ASEAN ministerial meeting as well as other smaller committees. Meetings mostly focus on specific topics such as defense or the environment, and are attended by ministers, instead of heads of government. Another three, the ASEAN plus three is a meeting between ASEAN, China, Japan, and South Korea, and is primarily held during each ASEAN summit. Until now China, Japan and South Korea have not yet formed free trade area, the meeting about FTA among them will be held at end of 2012. ISEA Euro Europe Meeting The ISEA Euro Europe Meeting is an informal dialogue process initiated in 1996 with the intention of strengthening cooperation between the countries of Europe and Asia, especially members of the European Union and ASEAN in particular. ASEAN, represented by its Secretariat, is one of the 45 ASEM partners. It also appoints a representative to sit on the governing board of Asia Europe Foundation, a socio-cultural organization associated with the meeting. Asian Euro Russia Summit The Asian Euro Russia Summit is an annual meeting between leaders of member states and the President of Russia. ASEAN Foreign Ministers Meeting The 44th annual meeting was held in Bali on 16 July 23, 2011. 
Indonesia proposed a unified ASEAN travel visa to ease travel within the region for citizens of ASEAN member states. The 45th annual meeting was held in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. For the first time in the history of ASEAN there was no diplomatic statement issued by the bloc at the end of the meeting. This was due to tensions over China's claim of ownership over near the entirety of the South China Sea and the counterclaim to such ownership by neighboring states. Economic Community ASEAN has emphasized regional cooperation in the A Euro 03 pillars A Euro, which are security, SOCI cultural integration, and economic integration. The regional grouping has made the most progress in economic integration by creating an ASEAN economic community by 2015. The average economic growth of ASEAN's member nations during 1989 Euro 2009 was Singapore with 6.73%, Malaysia with 6.15%, Indonesia with 5.16%, Thailand with 5.02%, and the Philippines with 3.79%. This economic growth was greater than the average Asia-Pacific economic cooperation economic growth, which was 2.83%. From CEPT to ACA Common Effective Preferential Tariff Scheme to promote the free flow of goods within ASEAN led to the ASEAN Free Trade Area. The AFTA is an agreement by the member nations of ASEAN concerning local manufacturing in all ASEAN countries. The AFTA agreement was signed on January 28, 1992 in Singapore. When the AFTA agreement was originally signed, ASEAN had six members, namely, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore and Thailand. Vietnam joined in 1995, Laos and Burma in 1997, and Cambodia in 1999. The latecomers have not fully met the AFTA's obligations, but they are officially considered part of the AFTA as they were required to sign the agreement upon entry into ASEAN, and were given longer time frames in which to meet AFTA's tariff reduction obligations. The next step is ASEAN economic community with main objectives are to create a single market and production base, highly competitive economic region, region of equitable economic development, region fully integrated into the global economy. Since 2007, the ASEAN countries gradually lower their import duties among them and targeted will be zero for most of the import duties at 2015. Since 2011, AEC has agreed to strengthen the position and increase the competitive edges of small and medium enterprises in the ASEAN region. Comprehensive Investment Area the ASEAN Comprehensive Investment Area will encourage the free flow of investment within ASEAN. The main principles of the ACIA are as follows, all industries are to be opened up for investment, with exclusions to be phased out according to schedules, national treatment is granted immediately to ASEAN investors with few exclusions, elimination of investment impediments, streamlining of investment process and procedures, enhancing transparency, undertaking investment facilitation measures, full realization of the ACIA with the removal of temporary exclusion lists and manufacturing agriculture, fisheries, forestry and mining as scheduled by 2010 for most ASEAN members and by 2015 for the CLMV countries. Trade in Services, an ASEAN framework agreement on trade in services was adopted at the ASEAN summit in Bangkok in December 1995. Under AFAS, ASEAN member states enter into successive rounds of negotiations to liberalize trade in services with the aim of submitting increasingly higher levels of commitments. The negotiations result in commitments that are set forth in schedules of specific commitments annexed to the framework agreement. These schedules are often referred to as packages of services commitments. At present, ASEAN has concluded seven packages of commitments under AFAS. Single Aviation Market The ASEAN Single Aviation Market is the region's major aviation policy geared towards the development of a unified and single aviation market in Southeast Asia by 2015. The aviation policy was proposed by the ASEAN Air Transport Working Group, supported by the ASEAN Senior Transport Officials Meeting 
and endorsed by the ASEAN transport ministers. The ASEAN SAM is expected to fully liberalize air travel between member states in the ASEAN region, allowing ASEAN countries and airlines operating in the region to directly benefit from the growth in air travel around the world, and also freeing up tourism, trade, investment and services flows between member states. Since December 1, 2008, Restrictions on the third and fourth freedoms of the air between capital cities of member states for air passenger services have been removed, while from January 1, 2009, full liberalization of air freight services in the region took effect. On January 1, 2011, full liberalization on fifth freedom traffic rights between all capital cities took effect. The ASEAN single aviation market policy will supersede existing unilateral, bilateral and multilateral air services agreements among member states which are inconsistent with its provisions. Free trade agreements with other countries, ASEAN has concluded free trade agreements with China, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and India. ASEAN-India bilateral trade crossed the $70 billion target in 2012. The agreement with People's Republic of China created the Asian Euro China Free Trade Area, which went into full effect on January 1, 2010. In addition, ASEAN is currently negotiating a free trade agreement with the European Union. Republic of China has also expressed interest in an agreement with ASEAN but needs to overcome diplomatic objections from China. ASEAN Six Majors ASEAN six majors refer to the six largest economies in the area with economies many times larger than the remaining four ASEAN countries. Development gap, when Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia joined ASEAN in the late 1990s, concerns were raised about a certain developmental divide regarding a gap in average per capita GDP between older and the newer members. In response, the initiative for ASEAN integration was formed by ASEAN as a regional integration policy with the principal goal of bridging this developmental divide, which, in addition to disparities in per capita GDP, is manifested by disparities in dimensions of human development such as life expectancy and literacy rates. Other than the IAI, other programs for the development of the Mekong Basin, where all four new ASEAN members are located, that tend to focus on infrastructure development have been effectively enacted. In general, ASEAN does not have the financial resources to extend substantial grants or loans to the new members. Therefore, it usually leaves the financing of these infrastructure projects to international financial institutions and to developed countries. Nevertheless, it has mobilized funding from these institutions and countries and from the ASEAN six themselves for areas where the development gap needs to be filled through the IAI program. Other programs intended for the development of the ASEAN four take advantage of the geographical proximity of the CLMV countries and tend to focus on infrastructure development in areas like transport, tourism, and power transmission. From CMI to AMRO, Due to Asian financial crisis of 1997 to 1998 and long and difficult negotiations with International Monetary Fund, ASEAN Plus 3 agreed to set up a mainly bilateral currency swap scheme known as the 2000 Chiang Mai Initiative to anticipate another financial crisis or currency turmoil in the future. In 2006 they agreed to make CMI with multilateralization and called as CMIM. On May 3, 2009, they agreed to make a currency pool consist of contribution $38.4 a billion each by China and Japan, $19.2 a billion by South Korea and totally $24 a billion by all of ASEAN members, so the total currency pool was $120 a billion. A key component has also newly been added, with the establishment of a surveillance unit. The ASEAN Plus 3 Macroeconomic and Research Office started its operation in Singapore in May 2011. It performs a key regional surveillance function as part of the $120 a billion of Chiang Mai Initiative multilateralization currency swap facility that was established by Finance Minister and Central Bank Governors of ASEAN countries plus China, Japan and South Korea in December 2009. According to some analysts, 
the amount of $120 a billion is relatively small, so coordination or help from International Monetary Fund is still needed. On May 3, 2012 ASEAN plus three finance ministers agreed to double emergency reserve fund to $240 billion. Foreign Direct Investment, in 2009, realized foreign direct investment was $37.9 a billion and increased by twofold in 2010 to $75.8 a billion. 22% of FDI came from the European Union, followed by ASEAN countries themselves by 16% and then followed by Japan and US. Intra-ASEAN travel, with the institutionalization of visa-free travel between ASEAN member states, intra-ASEAN travel has boomed, a sign that endeavors to form an ASEAN community shall bear fruit in years to come. In 2010. 47% or 34 million out of 73 million tourists in ASEAN member states were from other ASEAN countries. Intra-ASEAN trade, until end of 2010, intra-ASEAN trade was still low which many of them were mostly exporting to countries outside the region, except Laos and Myanmar were ASEAN oriented in foreign trade with 80% and 50% respectively of their exports went to other ASEAN countries. ASEAN Capital Market Forum, ASEAN Capital Market Forum consist of, ASEAN linkage, until end of 2013 only has three stock exchange members, Versa Malaysia, Singapore Exchange and Stock Exchange of Thailand, but cover 70% of transaction values of seven ASEAN stock exchanges, with objective to integrate ASEAN stock exchanges to compete with international stock exchanges mutual recognition of disclosure standards, with objective to harmonize and equal of ASEAN standards, mutual recognition of collective of investment scheme, with objective to harmonize all regulations in ASEAN which related with CIS, some countries are still categorized as financial action task force. Non-cooperative country which are not maximum to do with money laundering and terrorism, Charter. On December 15, 2008. The members of ASEAN met in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta to launch a charter, signed in November 2007, with the aim of moving closer to an EU-style community. The charter turns ASEAN into a legal entity and aims to create a single free trade area for the region encompassing 500 million people. President of Indonesia Susilo Bambang Abvano stated that this is a momentous development when ASEAN is consolidating integrating and transforming itself into a community. It is achieved while ASEAN seeks a more vigorous role in Asian and global affairs at a time when the international system is experiencing a seismic shift, he added, referring to climate change and economic upheaval, and concluded Southeast Asia is no longer the bitterly divided, war-torn region it was in the 1960s and 1970s. The fundamental principles include, a, respect for the independence, sovereignty, equality, territorial integrity and national identity of all ASEAN member states. b. Shared commitment and collective responsibility in enhancing regional peace, security and prosperity. c. Renunciation of aggression and of the threat or use of force or other actions in any manner inconsistent with international law. d. Reliance on peaceful settlement of disputes. e. Non-interference in the internal affairs of ASEAN member states. F. Respect for the right of every member state to lead its national existence free from external interference, subversion and coercion. G. Enhanced consultations on matters seriously affecting the common interest of ASEAN. H. Adherence to the rule of law, good governance, the principles of democracy and constitutional government. I. Respect for fundamental freedoms, the promotion and protection of human rights, and the promotion of social justice. J. Upholding the United Nations Charter and international law, including international humanitarian law, subscribed to by ASEAN member states. K. Abstention from participation in any policy or activity, including the use of its territory pursued by an ASEAN member state or non-ASEAN state or any non-state actor, which threatens the sovereignty, 
territorial integrity or political and economic stability of ASEAN member states. L. Respect for the different cultures, languages and religions of the peoples of ASEAN, while emphasizing their common values in the spirit of unity and diversity. M. The centrality of ASEAN in external political, economic, social and cultural relations while remaining actively engaged, outward-looking, inclusive and non-discriminatory. And, N. Adherence to multilateral trade rules and ASEAN's rules-based regimes for effective implementation of economic commitments and progressive reduction towards elimination of all barriers to regional economic integration, in a market-driven economy. However, the ongoing global financial crisis was stated as being a threat to the goals envisioned by the Charter, and also set forth the idea of a proposed human rights body to be discussed at a future summit in February 2009. This proposition caused controversy, as the body would not have the power to impose sanctions or punish countries who violate citizens' rights and would therefore be limited in effectiveness. The body was established later in 2009 as the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights. In November 2012, the Commission adopted the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration. Cultural Activities The organization hosts cultural activities in an attempt to further integrate the region. These include sports and educational activities as well as writing awards. Examples of these include the ASEAN University Network the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, the ASEAN Outstanding Scientist and Technologist Award, and the Singapore-sponsored ASEAN Scholarship. ASEAN Media Cooperation, the ASEAN Media Cooperation set digital television standards, policies and create in preparation for broadcasters to transition from analog to digital broadcasting, better promote media collaboration and information exchange to enhance voice understanding, and perspective between ASEAN people on the international stage. The ASEAN member countries aim media sector towards digitalization and further regional media co-action. AMC establishes partnerships between ASEAN news media, and cooperate on information sharing, photo swapping, technical cooperation, exchange programs, and facilitating joint news coverage and exchange of news footage. The concept was stressed during the 11th AMRI conference adopting the theme, a Euro media connecting peoples and bridging cultures towards one ASEAN national Euro. ASEAN ministers believe that the new and traditional media are important mediums to connect ASEAN people and bridging the cultural gap. Accessing information towards the goal of creating a one ASEAN nation requires participation among the nation members and its citizens. During the 18th ASEAN summit in May 2011, the chair stated the important role of a participatory approach among people and stakeholders of ASEAN towards AA Euro OE people oriented, people centered, and rule based Asian Euro. Several key initiatives that were initiated under the AMC ASEAN Media Portal The new ASEAN Media Portal was launched November 16, 2007, by the ASEAN Secretary General. Mr. On Kang Yong, and witnessed by Singapore a Euro unregistered trademark S Minister for Information, Communications and the Arts, Dr. Lee Boon Yang. The said portal aims to provide a one stop site that contains documentaries, games, music videos, and multimedia clips on the culture, arts, and heritage of the ASEAN countries to showcase the rich ASEAN culture and the capabilities of its media industry. ASEAN Newsmaker Project, an initiative launched in 2009 that trains students and teachers to produce informational video clips about the lifestyle in their country. The project was initiated by Singapore to work closely with 500 primary and secondary students, aging from 9 to 16 years old, along with their mentors from the 10 ASEAN countries to produce informative videos promoting their respective county Euro unregistered trademark S culture. Students underwent training for the newsmaker software use, video production and responsible internet use and hoped to develop the language skills and story narration among the said students. Engaging the youth using new media as an approach to create a one ASEAN community is stressed by Dr. Soung Rath Kavi, 
Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for ASEAN Socio Cultural Community, a Euro OE raising ASEAN awareness amongst the youth is part and parcel of our efforts to build the ASEAN community by 2015. Using ICT in the media, our youths in the region will get to know ASEAN better, deepening their understanding and appreciation of the cultures, social traditions and values in ASEAN A Euro ASEAN Digital Broadcasting Meeting, an annual forum for ASEAN members to set digital television standards and policies, and to discuss progress in the implementation of the blueprint to switch over from analog to digital TV broadcasting by 2020. During the 11th ASEAN Digital Broadcasting Meeting, members updated the status on DTV implementation and agreed to inform ASEAN members on the guidelines for ASEAN Digital Switchover. An issue was raised on the availability and affordability of set-top boxes, thus ASEAN members were asked to make policies to determine funding for the STB, methods of allocation subsidies and rebates and other methods for the allocation of STB. It was also agreed in the meeting to form a task force to develop STB specifications for DVBT2 to ensure efficiency. Asian the Euro unregistered trademark as Next Top Chef and The Legend of the Golden Talisman, two interactive games developed to raise awareness about ASEAN, and its people, places and cultures, new media and social media. During the 11th ASEAN Ministers Responsible for Information meeting held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, ASEAN leaders recognized the emergence of new and social media as an important tool for communications and interaction in ASEAN today. The ministers agreed that efforts should be made to leverage on social media to promote ASEAN awareness towards achieving an ASEAN community by 2015. Initially, ASEAN will consolidate the ASEAN Culture and Information Portal and the ASEAN Media Portal to incorporate new media elements. SEA Wright Award The SEA Wright Award is a literary award given to Southeast Asian poets and writers annually since 1979. The award is either given for a specific work or as a recognition of an author's lifetime achievement. Works that are honored vary and have included poetry, short stories, novels, plays, folklore as well as scholarly and religious works. Ceremonies are held in Bangkok and are presided by a member of the Thai royal family. ASEAL, ASEAL or the Association of Southeast Asian Institutions of Higher Learning is a non-governmental organization founded in 1956 that strives to strengthen higher learning institutions, especially in teaching, research, and public service with the intention of cultivating a sense of regional identity and interdependence. Heritage Parks ASEAN Heritage Parks is a list of nature parks launched 1984 and relaunched in 2004. It aims to protect the region's natural treasures. There are now 35 such protected areas, including the Tubataha Reef Marine Park and the Kinabalu National Park. ASEAN Heritage Sites, Songs and Music the ASEAN Way, the official regional anthem of ASEAN music by Katikum Sudprasert and Sampao Triudam. Lyrics by Apayom Valanfatra. ASEAN Song of Unity or ASEAN Hymn. Music by Ryan Kayabiab. Let Us Move Ahead, an ASEAN Song. Composed by Kandra Darisman. ASEAN Rise, ASEAN's 40th Anniversary Song. Music by A. Dick Lee. Lyrics by A. Stephanie Sun, Education and Human Development, as the collective entity to enhance regional cooperation in education. The ASEAN Education Ministers have determined four priorities that ASEAN efforts toward improved education would address, promoting ASEAN awareness among ASEAN citizens, particularly youth. Strengthening ASEAN identity through education. Building ASEAN human resources in the field of education. And strengthening ASEAN university networking. Nations such as Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, and the Philippines have experienced rapid development over the past 20 years, and this has been visibly evident in their educational systems. Each country has developed unique, yet interconnected through ASEAN initiatives, 
human and physical infrastructure to provide youth education, a primary determinant in future capabilities and sustained economic growth for the entire region. Various programs and projects have been and are currently in the process of being developed to fulfill these directives and to reach these future goals. At the 11th ASEAN Summit in December 2005, ASEAN leaders set new directions for regional education collaboration when they welcomed the decision of the ASEAN Education Ministers to convene the ASEAN Education Ministers a Euro unregistered trademark meetings on a regular basis. The leaders also called for ASEAN Education Ministers to focus on enhancing regional cooperation in education. The ASEAN Education Ministers meeting, which meets annually, oversees ASEAN cooperation efforts on education at the ministerial level. With regard to implementation, such programs and activities resulting from such efforts are for the most part carried out by the ASEAN senior officials on education, which reports to the ASEAN education ministers meeting. SOMED also manages cooperation on higher education through the ASEAN university network. The AUN was established to assist ASEAN in promoting cooperation among ASEAN scholars, academics, and scientists in the region. Developing academic and professional human resources in the region. Promoting information dissemination among the ASEAN academic community. And enhancing the awareness of regional identity and the sense of ASEAN-ness among members. Education indicators outlined hereafter belong to primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. Primary education is generally defined as the level of education where children are provided with basic reading, writing, and mathematical skills together with elementary understanding of such subjects as history, geography, natural science, social science, art, and music. Secondary education continues to build up on the knowledge provided by primary education and aims at laying the foundations for lifelong learning and human development with more advanced material and learning mechanisms. Tertiary education, whether or not leading to an advanced research qualification, requires minimally the successful completion of secondary education for admission and entails the level of education within some college or university. School enrollment and participation Participation in formal education is usually measured by the metric gross enrollment ratio and net enrollment ratio. The ENIA demonstrates the extent of participation in a given age-specific level of education. The purpose of the GER is to show the total enrollment in a level of education regardless of age. The GER is expressed as a percentage of the official school-age population corresponding to the same level of education. Primary education we can make a few observations based on reported data on primary education enrollment. Brunei Darussalam had almost reached 100% net enrollment by 2001, while Indonesia has slowly moved downward from close to that enrollment percentage thereafter. The Philippines has been inching closer and closer to this target in recent years. The data indicate two groups of countries one which has consistently attained a net enrollment ratio of more than 90% and the other group with around 80%. Vietnam started in the lower group and has moved to the upper group in the last few decades. Thailand has not provided data for both sexes, but the separate net enrollment ratio for girls and boys indicates that the overall ratio would be between 86% and 87%, and as such would be closer to the higher group. The primary net enrollment ratios of boys were almost always higher than those of girls for all reporting countries except Malaysia. For Singapore and Indonesia since 1998, however, the net enrollment ratios for girls and boys were not significantly different. A marked widening of gender gap was noticeable in the Philippines in 1997 but in 1999 the net enrollment ratios for girls exceeded that for boys. It is also useful to look at retainment and efficiency rates in education throughout ASEAN. The effectiveness of efforts to extend literacy depends on the ability of the education system to ensure full participation of school-aged children and their successful progression to reach at least grade 5, which is the stage when they are believed to have firmly acquired literacy and numeracy. 
The usual indicator to measure the level of this efficiency achievement is the proportion of pupils starting grade 1 reaching grade 5 of primary education. Most reporting countries in ASEAN have steadily improved retention rates of pupils through fifth grade. At the top are Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand, which have shown consistent survival rates of close to 100%, indicating a very high retention of children in school through at least fifth grade. Among the rest of the countries with rates ranging from 57% to 89% towards the end of the past century, Myanmar has maintained the largest improvements over the years. Secondary Education By 2001, Brunei Darussalam, Myanmar, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines had achieved improvements in net enrollment ratios for secondary education of 11% 19% over those of 1990 or 1991. Vietnam experienced the fastest growth rate in net enrollment between the years 1993 and 1998. Singapore, the country with the highest overall achievement, has maintained consistently high net enrollment rates of above 90% since 1994. With regard to gender differences, the difference in the ratios of females to males ranges from 0.2% 6%. The overall pattern is that girls seem to exhibit appreciably higher net enrollment ratios for secondary education, except in the case of Singapore where the ratios for girls and boys converged in the second half of the reporting period. Tertiary Education While the HPAs and ASEAN-6 have invested heavily in public education, and, unlike many other developing nations, have concentrated on primary and secondary schooling. Tertiary education has been left largely to the private sector. Tertiary education in Southeast Asia is, in general, relatively weak. In most cases universities are focused on teaching and service to government rather than academic research. Additionally, universities in Southeast Asia, both in terms of academic salaries and research infrastructure, tend to be financially handicapped and poorly supported. Moreover, Regional academic journals cater to their home informed audiences and respond less to international standards, which makes universal or regional benchmarking difficult. University Network The ASEAN University Network is a consortium of Southeast Asian universities. It was originally founded in November 1995 by 11 universities within the member states. Currently, AUN comprises 26 participating universities. The Southeast Asia Engineering Education Development Network Project was officially established as an autonomous sub network of the ASEAN University Network in April 2001. AUN Seed Net aimed at promoting human resources development in engineering in ASEAN. The network consists of 19 leading member institutions from 10 ASEAN countries with the support of 11 leading Japanese supporting universities. AUN SeedNet is mainly supported by the Japanese government through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, and partially supported by the ASEAN Foundation. AUN SeedNet activities are implemented by the AUN SeedNet Secretariat with the support of the JICA project for AUN SeedNet, now based at Shulilongkorn University, Thailand. Public efforts, financial resources, Governments have a vested interest in investing in education and other aspects of human capital infrastructure, especially those governments of rapidly developing nations such as those within ASEAN. In the short run, investment spending directly supports aggregate demand and growth. In the longer term, investments in physical infrastructure, in productivity enhancements by businesses, and especially in the public provision of education and health services determine the potential for growth. To measure the investments in education by governments, we use the metrics of public current expenditure on primary education as a percent of GDP and expenditure per pupil as a percent of GDP. These two indicators are based on public current expenditure at all government levels on all public primary schools and subsidies to private educational institutions, teachers and pupils. In some instances regarding figures used in these calculations, Data on current public expenditure on education may refer only to the Ministry of Education, excluding other ministries that spend a part of their budget on educational activities. 
primary education expenditure in the reporting ASEAN countries is usually lower than 3% of GDP, with the exception of Indonesia, which reported 5%. Two countries that show noticeable rising trends are the Philippines and Lao PDR. Malaysia has experienced a gradual downward trend throughout the 1990s but stabilized around the year 2000. Indonesia experienced a sharp decline in primary education expenditure as a percent of GDP between 1995 and 1999 from almost 10% to 5%. Singapore has maintained a stable 0.6% up until 2000 and increased slightly to 0.7% in 2001. While the public current expenditure on primary education as percentage of GDP can never be close to 100%, it is theoretically possible to have the public current expenditure per pupil as percentage of GDP per capita to reach or exceed 100%. Except for Singapore, this indicator fluctuates somewhat, but seems to have stabilized at around 10% for two reporting countries of ASEAN at the end of the 1990s decade. Since 1996, the indicator has steadily risen in the Philippines reaching almost 14% by 1998. Upward or downward trend for this indicator can have many causes which include sharp changes in enrollment rates of government expenditures on primary education. Scholarship The ASEAN scholarship is a scholarship program offered by Singapore to the nine other member states for secondary school, junior college, and university education. It covers accommodation, food, medical benefits and accident insurance, school fees, and examination fees. Scholarship recipients who then perform well in the GCE Advanced Level Examination may apply for ASEAN undergraduate scholarships, which are tailored specifically for undergraduate institutions in Singapore and in other ASEAN member countries. Singapore has effectively used this program to attract many of the best students from the ASEAN region over the past several years, and scholars for the most part tend to remain in Singapore to pursue undergraduate studies through the ASEAN Undergraduate Scholarship Program. Education is a determinant of human development, statistically, educational attainment strongly correlates with subsequent income levels and development capabilities. An improvement in educational attainment will have a positive effect on a country's income and human development growth. It is therefore evident that universal access to and completion of, primary or basic education is a self-evident goal upon which the foundations for building the human capacity rests. Increased participation, regardless of sex, in secondary and tertiary levels of education is a necessary step to be able to move forward in the process of achieving equity, capacity building, access to information, and strengthening science. Literacy rates Literacy indicators provide us with a measure of the number of literate persons within the population who are capable of using written words in daily and to continue to learn. The literacy rate essentially reflects the cumulative accomplishment of education in spreading literacy. The literacy rate is usually linked to school enrollment ratios and school retainment rates of primary education, both of which contribute to the literate population. The data of literacy rates in reporting countries of 15 to 24 years old reflect outcomes of the basic education process and is therefore considered an accepted measure of the effectiveness of that country's education system's investment in children. Among the eight ASEAN countries reporting six have made significant progress towards 100% literacy by 2000. This progress is comparable with member countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, an impressive accomplishment. Overall, there is not much disparity between male and female literacy with the exceptions of Cambodia and Lao PDR, where the literacy rate for females is about 10% lower than that of males in 1999. The results of overall improvement in literacy rates, though, indicate positive effectiveness of the primary education systems of these countries throughout the 1990s. Looking at adult literacy rates, we can see that most reporting countries have made significant progress in this demographic as well. All but two reporting countries reached adult literacy rates of around 90% or better. Looking at the differences in literacy rates by sex, we can see a visible gender gap. This gap is most apparent in Cambodia and Laos, 
with percentage differences between adult men and adult women literacy rates of 14% and 19%, respectively. Only in the Philippines is the literacy rate among women higher than among men. Sports, Southeast Asian Games, the Southeast Asian Games, commonly known as the SEA Games, is a biennial multi-sport event involving participants from the current 11 countries of Southeast Asia. The Games is under regulation of the Southeast Asian Games Federation with supervision by the International Olympic Committee and the Olympic Council of Asia. ASEAN Para Games The ASEAN Para Games is a biennial multi-sport event held after every Southeast Asian Games for athletes with physical disabilities. The Games are participated by the 11 countries located in Southeast Asia. The Games, patterned after the Paralympic Games, are played by physically challenged athletes with mobility disabilities, visual disabilities, FESPIC Games slash Asian Para Games, the FESPIC Games, also known as the Far East and South Pacific Games for the persons with disability, was the biggest multi-sports games in Asia and South Pacific region. The FESPIC Games were held nine times and bowed out, a success in December 2006 in the ninth FESPIC Games in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The Games re-emerged as the 2010 Asian Para Games in Guangzhou, China. The 2010 Asian Para Games debuted shortly after the conclusion of the 16th Asian Games, using the same facilities and venue made disability accessible. The inaugural Asian Para Games, the parallel event for athletes with physical disabilities, is a multi-sport event held every four years after every Asian Games. Football Championship the ASEAN Football Championship is a biennial football competition organized by the ASEAN Football Federation, accredited by FIFA and contested by the national teams of Southeast Asian nations. It was inaugurated in 1996 as Tiger Cup, but after Asia Pacific Breweries terminated the sponsorship deal, Tiger was renamed ASEAN. ASEAN 2030 FIFA World Cup bid, January 2011. As a result of ASEAN foreign ministers at Lombok meeting, they agreed bid to host the FIFA World Cup in 2030 as a single entity. May 2011, ASEAN will go ahead with its bid for the FIFA 2030 World Cup. It was a follow-up to the agreement reached in January before. ASEAN Defense Industry Collaboration, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand have established defense industries. To cut cost and plan to be self-sufficient by 2030, Indonesia and Malaysia have agreed to promote the creation of the ASEAN Defense Industry Collaboration. The United States military reportedly has said that ADIC could have additional benefits beyond cost savings for ASEAN members, including facilitating a set of standards, similar to NATO, that will improve interoperability among ASEAN and U.S. militaries and increase the effectiveness of regional response to threats to Asia-Pacific peace and stability. Criticism Non-ASEAN countries have criticized ASEAN for being too soft in its approach to promoting human rights and democracy in the junta-led Burma. Despite global outrage at the military crackdown on unarmed protesters in Yangon, ASEAN has refused to suspend Burma as a member and also rejects proposals for economic sanctions. This has caused concern as the European Union, a potential trade partner, has refused to conduct free trade negotiations at a regional level for these political reasons. International observers view it as a talk shop, which implies that the organization is big on words but small on action. However, leaders such as the Philippines Foreign Affairs Secretary, Alberto Romulo, said it is a workshop not a talk shop. Others have also expressed similar sentiment. Head of the International Institute of Strategic Studies at EuroAsia, Tim Huxley cites the diverse political systems present in the grouping, including many young states, as a barrier to far-reaching cooperation outside the economic sphere. He also asserts that in the absence of an external threat to rally against with the end of the Cold War, ASEAN has begun to be less successful at restraining its members and resolving border disputes such as those between Burma and Thailand and Indonesia and Malaysia. During the 12th ASEAN summit in Cebu, several activist groups staged anti-globalization protests. According to the activists, 
the agenda of economic integration would negatively affect industries in the Philippines and would cause thousands of Filipinos to lose their jobs. ASEAN competitions, SEA Games, ASEAN University Games, ASEAN School Games, ASEAN Para Games, ASEAN Football Championship, see also. Asian Euro India Commemorative Summit, ASEAN India Car Rally 2012, ASEAN Common Time, ASEAN Exchanges, ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, ASEAN Sculpture Garden, Asia Pacific Forum, Asian Monetary Unit, Chiang Mai Initiative, Comprehensive Economic Partnership for East Asia, List of ASEAN Countries by GDP, Mekong Ganga Cooperation, Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, Blue Card System, the ASEAN Motor Insurance Scheme, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, Literature, ASEAN Community in Figures 2012, Jakarta, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, 2012, ISBN A978-602-7643-22-1, Achaya, Amitav, Constructing a Security Community in Southeast Asia, ASEAN and the Problem of Regional Order, Abingdonox in New York, Routledge, ISBN A978-0-415-41450, Niner, Collins, Allen, Building a People-Oriented Security Community The ASEAN Way, Abingdonox in New York, Routledge, ISBN A978-0-415-41450, Fry, Gerald W., The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, New York, Chelsea House, ISBN A978-0-7910-9609-2, Lee, Lung Yong, ed., ASEAN Matters. Reflecting on the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Singapore, World Scientific Publishing, ISBN A978-981-4335-06-5 Hark, Jawan Quarter GEN. Morida, Noel M. Eds, Cooperative Security in the Asia-Pacific, the ASEAN Regional Forum, Abingdonox in New York, Routledge, ISBN A978-0-415-46053-2 Severino, Rodolfo, ASEAN, Singapore, ISEAS Publications, ISBN A978-981-230-750, References. Further reading, Taiwan ASEAN Studies Center. ASEAN Outlook Magazine. May 2013. Myanmar a Euro Unregistered Trademark S Overlooked Industry Opportunities and Investment Climate, by David Dubine, External Links, Organization, ASEAN Secretariat, Retrieved March 13, 2007. ASEAN Regional Forum, Retrieved March 13, 2007. BBC Country Profile ASEAN, Retrieved March 13, 2007. Summits 14th ASEAN Summit, 13th ASEAN Summit Official Site. Retrieved September 16, 2007. 12th ASEAN Summit, Retrieved March 13, 2007. 11th ASEAN Summit 12 Euro December 14, 2005 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Retrieved March 13, 2007. ASEAN Organizations, ASEAN's Official Directory of ASEAN Organizations, ASEAN Architect, ASEAN Law Association, ASEAN Ports Association, USASEAN Business Council, ASEAN China Free Trade Area.